Council Chamber, 429 C Street. Today is July 21, 2020. Regular for uh, regular session, 7.30, call to order. Invocation. I will uh, ask everybody to rise. Let us pray. <clears throat> Watch over the city council and staff and give them the wisdom to conduct today's meeting and make decisions in the best interest of the citizens. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Uh, please amen. Uh, pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Roll call. <laughs> Council Member Lyons. Here. Council Member Scaldi. Council Member who? I think you need to speak up. They no. can't hear you. Council Member Scaldi. Council Member Scaldi. He yeah, said he said present. Mayor Pro Tem Plord. Present. Mayor Neal. Here. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, we have two members present in on the dais and two members on the phone. The mayor has, has uh, allowed me to conduct the meeting tonight since he is uh, not present in the on the dais. Uh, Absolutely. Any closed session report? Nothing to report, Mayor and Council. Okay. Agenda approval, no. additions, and or deletions. Everything fine? Yeah, there's none. Okay. Public comment. Public comment will be in accordance with the attached policy that was on the internet along with the agenda. At this time, this time is reserved for members in the audience to do, address the city council on items of interest that are not on the agenda and are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. It is recommended that speakers limit their comments to three minutes each and it is requested that no comment be made during the period an item on the agenda, on items on the agenda. The council is prohibited by law from taking any action on matters discussed that are not on the agenda. Prior to addressing the council, any handouts for council will be provided to the city clerk for distribution to the council and appropriate staff. Do we have any correspondence or public comment we have one from Jennifer Solis, 757 Redwood Lane. Hello, I know this new format will take some getting used to. I usually edit my comments as I hear others speak to avoid being repetitive. I also want you to hear my emotion through my words. Although I've watched my public comments, once they're in my head, I thought I was being compassionate, but in reality, it was cringing to listen to. I am still learning and appreciate your kindness and patience with me and many others. I hope there will be an updated format by the next meeting. I've emailed my ideas to Nathan and I'm hoping next time you can see my face on a screen or at least hear my voice. Until then, here it goes. At the last council meeting, I was proud of you. I sat in awe as I saw people on different sides of the same issue pas passionately share about this city I love. How you, our leaders, listened, city empathized, respectfully disagreed and took the time to share your side, your view, your heart for Lamore was inspiring. Thank you. Between this, the Facebook Live Q and A's with Nathan, the ones with the Lamore Chamber has been doing and the NAACP Roundtable, I'm excited for the future of Lamore. Thank you for serving and choosing this city. Okay, with no other comments, we will close public comment. We have a ceremonial and presentation section one. We have none. Department and City Managers Report Section 2, 2-1, City Manager. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Council Members. So just a couple updates. Um, as you know, the, the governor has put more restrictions out on to help prevent COVID. So uh, schools had sent out notices to the residents of Lemoore that they were gonna start school in August. That has now been changed uh, until Kings County gets off the watch list for 14 consecutive days, we will have distance learning. I'm still trying to wrap that up and how that's gonna look and the requirements coming out from the state on that. Additionally, I talked last meeting and got consensus for CARES Act spending. Um, still a work in process. 
um, I can uh, report out that we're still bringing bringing a plan to you. We are going to there's we can pick our methodology if we want reimbursement and or just issue payments. We're going to go. We're going to wait for the money to come in and then formulate our plan to spend it. Just there's so many uncertainties with with the plan right now that if you don't roll it out properly, you're subject to audits and I don't want to get caught having to pay monies back. So um, people are starting to roll it out, but slowly. So we are not behind the eight ball at all on this, but I expect to have something probably more concrete the second meeting in August to discuss with council on the, the CARES Act funding. And like I said earlier, it is, um, we're, our share is about 337,000. We will get a one six payment um, of those funds at the end of July. And then they're talking about payments monthly thereafter and like three installments until you're whole. So it is coming. Um, restaurants have been closed down again. They can do takeout or they can do outdoor dining. The city is offering free encroachment permits. Um, I can tell you last week I've eaten out on the sidewalk twice at two of our eateries. It's been a pleasant experience both times. So I hope more people take ad advantage of it. And um, there's, there's a lot of stuff coming out of the state. Um, they're releasing a bunch of uh, incarcerated individuals eight, 9,000 people are going to be on the streets. So now they're, they're funneling a lot of dollars, millions of dollars to help house these people and where to put them when they get out. So they are free from COVID. Um, they're still a big push on um, project homeless and the, the key properties to get money to rehabilitate hotels and things like that. And, and, um, <clears throat> residences to house the homeless. Um, so we're still looking at that. Um, we're at about four or five right now, homeless people that we continually monitor in the city of Lemoore. So um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, and that's it for, for me tonight. Thank you. Any department heads? Uh, Just, any oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we have Chief German here to give the update on the volunteer fire department. I didn't see you walk in. Sorry, Bruce. That's all right. Not a problem. I like to be ignored sometimes. You can go to my house. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. The few of you that are here. That's that's okay, though. Well, no, the two are on the phone, just so you know. Yes. Oh, is that right. mic on they, that you're using? Can you hear me now? Yes. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. Anyway, for the uh, this is for the month of June. I haven't been here for a while, so we'll try and get, catch up. We had 96 fire calls. We had 91 EMT calls. We had three miscellaneous trainings. Monthly total was 195 calls for the month of June. Year-to-date trainings and meetings with 26. Year-to-date fire calls, 404. Year-to-date EMT calls, 514. Year-to-date training was 23. Year-to-date total was 967 altogether. What I did want to come over and talk about was since the, uh, you know, everybody's about COVID, COVID. The uh, restrictions went on March 13th. Since March 13th, we have had 508 total EMT calls, EMS calls. Of those 508, and this is as of yesterday, 204 of them were COVID related. Some of them were suspected meaning that they had tested and were waiting for the results. Some of them were positive and, you know, they are positive basically. And a lot of the other ones, there's 156 of those where they had the symptoms, they were showing it, but they just had not even gone in and got tested yet. Ourselves, we have been taking all the precautions that we can. We wear our mask, we wear our gloves, some of these that come across, dispatch has been very good at telling us that they're positive or suspected. And uh, we, again, dispatch has been very good to us. And sometimes we just stage in the, in the firehouse asking if they need us, give us a call. Other times we are responding, but staging outside or following the protocols, one person in. Um, we have our disinfectants we have all of it that we're taking care of ourselves i know nathan was just talking about the cares act our grant i keep calling it a grant fire department actually put in for one i believe the pd also put in for one 
but part of our deal is uh, that I've already looked at it. I might be ahead of myself here, but part of it is NFPA requires and OSHA, I believe, a special washing machine. They call it an extractor that takes all that out, that washes and all that. That is that is accepted on the CARES program, and I've already priced one out. That's what my my major goal is to just try and get us get us ahead of the ball game on that also. And that's really about it. Other than like I said, we we're doing everything we can to protect ourselves. Nobody in the department has uh, contracted it. We've had some of them that. Uh, the wives or their daughters or their sons have gotten it and it's never carried on. Those, those people have chosen to stay home and quarantine themselves. I've talked to the Kings County public health nurse, one of them, uh, probably every two weeks, talk to her about what's going on and how it's going. And I don't know if they even have a handle on it. They, you know, they, she shared with me that there was one patient that, uh, tested positive and did her 14 day quarantine and they test her. She was still positive and said she was positive for six weeks, but she was not contagious that. Yeah. So it's, it's just one of those, it's just one of those deals. We had another one. Councilman Scaldi called me a month ago and uh, let's see if I can say this right. One of the students had been quarantined at home because she was positive. School, she got cleared, school activities started that she wanted to participate in. She went and did it. In the meantime, her dad came down positive in the household. So that's the reason I called the public health nurse. They say, once you've had it, you've had it. It doesn't matter if the person sitting next to you has it, you cannot pass it on. That, and I always thought that it's out there. So all I can figure out is that instead of it being on you, that it's in you, if that makes any sense. But uh, yeah, it, they're they're still trying to figure it out. We're still trying to figure it out, but we're doing the best we can. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank, thank you for your service. You bet. Thank you. Some things you just can't. You don't have any choice. You have to believe what you hear, but you don't have to believe everything you hear. So you just have to be working on what ifs. Any other department heads? No, that's, it. that's it. Okay, we'll move on to the consent calendar section three. Um, items considered routine in nature and placed on the consent calendar, they will all be considered and voted upon in one vote as one item unless the council member or member of the public requests individual consideration. 3-1. Approval minutes regular meeting July 7, 2020. 3-2, approval, second reading, ordinance 2020-07, adding Article C to Chapter 3 of the City of Lemoore Municipal Code relating to a special sales and use tax. 3-3, approval, grant deed for right-of-way dedication and grant easement by Lemoore Union Elementary School District a California public school district along frontage of APN number 021-660-008. 3-4, award acceptance from FEMA assistance to firefighters grant program COVID-19. 3-5, approval, reject all bids for the industrial park development phase one and phase two. Is there anyone in the public that, or on the council that would like to pull any item on the consent calendar? None from the phone, none from the dais. Is there a member of the public that would like to pull anything? The city clerk says no, so um, would anybody like to make a motion? A motion to approve the consent calendar. Motion to, I, I second that motion. Uh, any discussion on the motion to approve the consent calendar? No discussion? Negative. Okay. Um, Council Member Lyons. Aye. And I vote aye. Uh, Council Member Scaldi. Aye. 
Mayor Pro Mayor uh, Neil. Here, got you. Okay, we uh, have a we have a unanimous on the consent calendar. Thank you. Public hearing section four four dash one. Public hearing uh, confi uh, confirming the diagram and assessment of annual levy for fiscal year. I'm gonna have to put my my video amplifiers back on 2020-21 for landscape and lighting maintenance district number one zone one through 13 resolution 2020-26 and public facility maintenance district number one zones one through 10 resolution 2020-27 amanda champion good evening council so last meeting, I came before you with the intent to assess the annual levies for the PFMDs and the LLMDs, which is the Public Facilities Maintenance Districts and the Lighting and Landscape Maintenance Districts. Tonight, we are here to hold a public hearing and to adopt a resolution confirming the diagram and assessments, which are included in the report. One of the questions brought up at the last meeting was the line item detail for the CIP budgets. So before you and on the screen for the online viewers is the line item for the CIP projects for the PFMDs. These are rough drafts as they've not been adopted by council. So pending approval of tonight's assessments, the budgets along with the CIPs will come back before you at the next meeting for official adoption. We also have Jim McGuire here with us tonight for any specific questions regarding the report. So what is what is this on our on our display? That is the line item detail for the CIP numbers that were outlined in the report. So this is what we plan on spending that extra money for. Mayor and council members, so this is in addition to the annual maintenance. These would be additional projects we're doing in each of those zones to help beautify them and get them back into character. So this this uh, just the LMMT, PFMDs, Public Facilities Maintenance Districts. Yeah. They are the these are all PFMDs. Okay, that's a question. Okay, so that's uh, <clears throat> one of the questions I had from a uh, one of. Uh, the people that live in zone two of, uh, was where was the money going? I, I remember the 250,000 is one of my questions from last time. And this is answering that question, I guess. Yes. Okay. So that person had asked me that question should have this available. Yes. It's not in the, it's not in the packet though. Mm -hmm. it, no, it, we will post it with the handouts that were provided. That'll be the handout. Yes. All right. Okay. That's the only question I have. Uh, we went through this quite a lot last time. So uh, why don't we just go right into public uh, or into the public hearing and see if there's any. Wait, where, where is this if I may, where is this location at? There's so, room. Mayor Neal, the districts are throughout the city in various locations. They're part of the subdiv subdivision agreements that we sign off on and enter into with the developers when they develop new housing areas. Okay, you don't have no you don't have no particular uh, no particular uh, uh, districts where they're going to be going. Yeah, zones one, two, three, five, six, and eight. So and we are alphabetical order, so or um, like I'm District D. So what districts would that be? One. Specifically, what districts are there? Can you help me there? I'd have to look at Get a zone map out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I have one. I would, I would like to. I, I would really I'm like to. Right what, what district. Zone one would be the landing. At zone two would be Liberty. Zone three, Silva Estates. Zone four. Uh, Parkview Estates, Zone 5 East Village Park, Zone 6 Heritage, 
Zone 7, Capistrano. Zone 8, Woodside. Zone okay. 9. Wood. Okay. That's basically getting all of them. Yeah, it's it's all in the staff report. Uh, oh. So uh, it's it's available to the public. Okay. Okay. So, so there is there any questions uh, from the council before we go into public comment or or into our uh, public uh, hearing? Hearing none. We'll go ahead and open up the public hearing. Have we uh, anyone submitted a, anything for the public hearing? Yes, we have one public comment. So, Jennifer Solis, 757 Redwood Lane. I would like the council to reconsider the cost to do a camp campaign to update the LLMDs. I know you know the facts. I know you know the costs. I know you know the history of it failing. I'm asking because I've pressed in and had the conversations with residents and businesses. I'm seeing those who have complained for months or some even years go from bashing the city and feeling helpless to having the same realization I did, which was I didn't know we as residents and business owners were creating the problem. We've tied the city's hands, then complained to you about it. I'm sorry. I want to help with the promotion, doing Facebook live videos, or we can even do a Facebook poll to get an idea of what people think. As I share the facts, I'm seeing those once frustrated people in a single conversation now asking me how they can help. I want to make our city great again and what it looks like matters. Morale also matters. Please consider the trade-offs, how much city staff time is spent fielding calls and complaints, how much time is spent trying to protect and repair the city's reputation. I want to be part of the solution. Please let me know how I can help make this happen. I would also like you to do a, invite you to do a Q&A with me on Facebook Live. I've heard Amy also offer. People want to hear your thoughts. I know it isn't easy to get back to everyone. I'm still waiting on some of you to respond to my email from a couple weeks ago. Facebook Love is an avenue where your voice can be heard on a larger level and where you can say it once and have hundreds hear, you, hear your answer. I'm looking forward to hearing back from you and seeing what else we can do. Thank you. Who was that? Jennifer Solis. No other comments? No other comments. Okay. Without uh, any other comments, I'll close the public hearing. <clears throat> any discussion on the staff report? Uh, <clears throat> anyone on the phone that would like to discuss the staff report? Hearing none, I'm, I'm going to... Nope. I think we discussed this at length last time, and... Uh, I would like to go ahead and and make a motion. I'll do a second. Well, just a second. I accept the engineering engineer's report and adopt resolution 2020-26 and resolution 2020-27 confirming the diagram and assessment of the annual levy for fiscal year 2020-2021 for landscape and lighting maintenance district number one, zone one through 13 and public facilities maintenance district number one, zones one through 10. Do I hear a second? Scaldi will second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, um, I vote aye. Council member Scaldi. Aye. Councilmember Lyons. Aye. Mayor Neal. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you very much. The next, uh, let's see, where am I? Okay. We have no new business. Uh, brief City Council Reports and Request Section 7 or Section 6. City Council Reports. Let's start off with uh, Council Member Lyons. Um, yeah, I've, I've phoned into my my uh, the the Commission on Aging, and we actually met with uh, what was the one called? I forgot the one at the recycling center. King's Rehabilitation. KWRA. KWRA, yeah. So, and you know, it's business as usual. Um, nothing really special to report there. Um, so that's all I really have right now. All right. Council Member Scaldi, any report? 
I'm going to go with no report this time. Okay. My report is I uh, attended the South San Juan, South Fork um, Groundwater Sustainability Agency via Zoom last week. Uh, the, the, the votes were uh, for the staff to uh, appoint officers. The, uh, the chair and the uh, vice chair were unanimously approved for uh, uh, getting their seats for another year. So um, the only seat that had to be filled was David Brown's secretary seat. Uh, they, they felt that I would make a great secretary for the agency, so I humbly accepted. So I was, it's a clerical thing. And then we had a, uh, then we had a, um, another couple of committees that had to be filled, one of which was the budget committee and the other one was a policy committee. Um, uh, district supervisor for district one, Joe Neves and myself were appointed to the budget committee and the policy committee. So I expect uh, a couple of more meetings every month in the future for that. I reminded them that there will be a shakeup at the end of the year after the election. So they'll have to find other people to fill the seats or may have to. And since uh, I'm not sure if Joe uh, Neves is up for election or not, but, but uh, if he isn't, then uh, there may be a shakeup anyway. Uh, I have a meeting uh, on Thursday with the, uh, the King's uh, Transportation, a usual 3.30 meeting. And I guess I, I'm, I'm not sure if the, uh, the King's County Association of Governments is gonna meet on Thursday or not, but if it does, I'll be there. And that's the only uh, report I have. Next, uh, Mayor Neal, do you have anything? Absolutely. Um, they had the NAACP. Um, uh, they had a little Zoom thing where they had the uh, DA, Keith Fagundes, was there. They had a lot of great hitters there that uh, do a lot of great things in Kings County. So we had the DA there. We had uh, different um, assembly men and different people, and, uh, uh, Kings Community Action there. So it was a nice board that they had talking about how we're going to greater our cities and how we're going to come together as one. And, it was just a great thing to see everybody come together and, and share ideas uh, as far as teaching credentials and what's going on in the educational field. So it was a great it was a great NWACP meeting. So it was good to see Nathan there as well as the chief there as well as just being involved. So I really appreciate that. That gave my heart glad. So thank you. That's all I have. Okay, that uh, concludes our agenda items for tonight. Uh, we will uh, adjourn until August 4th uh, for the next city council meeting. We are adjourned. <laughs>